All right, in this video, we're going to go over the Unit 1B Quiz 3 review. Uh, the one thing I just noticed, and that is the, uh, the, first, the very first question, John Elway, uh, we have not gone over this yet, so we are going to go ahead and skip the first two questions and go to the first question that we have done, which is this one right here. So I apologize for the confusion, but in this digital learning world that we live in, uh, the schedule had to be changed a little bit. So, you know, yeah, we have to adapt. All right, so here we go. It says, for this question, let's see, it says, after multiplying, adding, multiplying the UPC procedure, what is the total of the procedure? Now, I got 72. I went ahead and gave you the answers, and then I'm going to go back and work on them. And the reason I did that is just so you can uh, skip through whatever you need to skip through if you're just looking for the answers. All right, so let's go ahead and go through the, UP, or the UPC procedure. Now, if you remember step one, is you are taking all of the numbers, starting with the first one. I, I shouldn't have said all the numbers. But selecting the very first number, which in this case is zero, and skipping every other one. So five, zero, three, zero, seven. All right. So I'm going to add all those numbers up. All right. So I'm going to add all those numbers up. And when I do, I end up with, I believe it's going to be 15. So step one, I add all this up, and I got 15. But if you remember, the first step of the UPC procedure is after you multiply it, you times it by 3. Or after you add it, you times it by 3. So step one adds up to be 60. Step two, very simple for UPC, is all the numbers that was not used for step one, you add up. So that means this 5, this 6, this 3, this 0, this 4, this 9. All right, so you're going to add all those numbers up. And when you do that, you're going to end up with 27. So when you add the two together, uh-oh, let's see. Wow, 15 times 3 is 45. You're probably shouting at the screen. I'm sorry, my bad, 45. Sorry, 45, 27. And then step 3 gives me 72. All right, so the answer is 72. Now, you know as well as I do that is not the right answer. All right, that is not the right answer. Now, don't make this mistake. Okay, here's where students are going to make the mistake, and that is they're going to think to themselves, they're going to look at this next question, they go, oh, it's invalid, so what should it be? So automatically what they're going to do is they're going to go, oh, 78 plus 8, so the check digit should be 8 because it will add to equal 80. Guys, that's incorrect because you already have a check digit here. Okay, the check digit has already been factored in to 72. Okay, so what you're going to have to do is if you know that the check digit is wrong, if you know that the check digit is wrong, here's what you do. You go back to the original question, you go back to the original thing, make an X for the check digit, and do everything over again. All right? So let me clean this up a little bit because it's starting to get turned into a little jumbled mess here. All right? So let me do all of this again. The easiest thing to do, oh, the bell, make this an X, and go through all the steps one more time. All right? So again, going through all the steps one more time. Step one, let me go ahead. And in fact, I'm not even going to highlight. I'm just going to put a little mark on it. So, so here, 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 that, that, and that. Adds up to get 15. Times it by 3, you get 45. Okay? Step two, when you add everything up, let's see, 5, that's 11. That's 11. Still 11. I believe that ends up being... I want to say 16. No, that's not 16. I know better than that. Ends up being 18. Sorry. It ends up being 18. And now my new total with my check digit crossed out ends up being 63. Now when there is an X, that's when you add up. Okay? So when there is an X. In fact, I should probably write this down to help you guys out. So let me kind of do this for a second. And that is... Let me type this. And this is something that you're probably going to need to pay attention to, okay? And that is, when there is an X, you add up, okay? So when there is an X, you add up, okay? Which means, if there's not an X, you can not add up 
All right. So when there's an X, you add up. When there's not an X, you cannot add up. You know, like like we were messing with that 72. We couldn't add that up because there wasn't an X. But when there is an X, you can add up. So that means if you're at 63, the next number, the next number, 63, or after 63 would be 70. So the next number would be 70, which means I have to add 70. All right. There you go. All right. So we have basically the same as that question, except I'm just breaking up into steps here. This is just extra reps here. All right. So again, starting with my first number, skipping every other one. All right. So skipping other one, add everything up. Let's see, 78. Let's see, I think step one, I think that's going to be 26. 26 going times it by three. Okay. Add all the other numbers up. That's not highlighted. Gives me 23. When adding the UPC procedure, what is the total of step three? I'm just adding 78 and 23. Get 101. Now we all know again. This goes. This is the exact same question. We know it's 101. We know it is not a valid UPC. Do not. Do not. Do not. Do not add nine. Okay. The reason why is look. There's not an X. We went back to that. Remember. If there is not an X, you cannot add it up, okay? There's not an X of that, okay? You cannot add it up. So what you have to do is you have to redo the entire problem, okay? You have to redo the entire problem. So once you have already determined that it's not, so we know that it's not a valid UPC, all this goes away, all right? We don't need that anymore, okay? We don't need that anymore, all right? So I'm going to cross this out, and I'm going to put an X here. Now remember, going back to what we did yesterday, or what we, I just did, there's an X, so I can add up now, okay? So the X allows you to add up. So again, step one, step one ends up being 78. Step two, let's see, I believe, let's see, step two, all the numbers that are not highlighted, zero, zero, still zero, that's four, that's 11, that's 14. Step two is 14, which means step three is 92. There's now an X, I'm going to add up. Next, after 92 is 8, so I plus 8. There you go. There's the valid UPC when the check vision is 8. All right. John's, Drew uh, Johnson's season stats are listed below. Find the slugging average for John. If you are doing this at home, if you go to the very last picture or the last uh, page that is, here is your formulas. The formulas are on the very last page. So just scoop down to your formulas. All right. Not that one, we're here. Okay. Now, the total number of bases, we're going to go ahead and skip that, so that's not an issue. All right, so if you remember for this particular problem, singles get multiplied by one, doubles get multiplied by two, triples by three, home runs four. Okay? So it's going to be 200 plus 2 times 69. Oh, I think it's 138. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 37 times 4. I want to say that's maybe you, I don't know, I'm not even going to try now. 144, I think. Oh, 148. See, that's why I didn't try. 148. Divide that by 900. All right. And then 200 plus 138 plus 6 plus 148. That gives me 492. Divide that by 900. And when you do that, you'll get 547. All right. Next question. All right, now we're dealing with UPC. Uh, well, sorry, uh, credit card. So now we're dealing with a credit card. So let's do this. All right, starting with the first number, four, three, skipping every one just like the UPC. All right, continuing. There it is. Remember, I'm going to add all those numbers up. So step one, add all those numbers up. I get 35. Okay, but then I'm going to times it by two because credit card is times by two. Now, remember, step two is the infamous five through nine range. Of the ones that are highlighted, which ones are in the 5 through 9 range? So starting with this very first 4, no, it is not. This 3, no. This 1, no. Hey, this 7 is, check. This 2 is not. This 5, check. This 4 is not. This 7 is. There you go, that's 3. Now, when applying the credit card procedure, what is the step of total of step 3? That's all the numbers that you haven't messed with. This 4, this 0, this 1, this 9, this 2, this 0, this 7, this 6. Add all that up, you get 29. So when I add 70, when I add 3, when I add 29, I get 102. 
So you should know, no, this is not a valid credit card. Okay, this is not a valid credit card. So it says, was it a valid credit card? No. If not, what should the check digit be? Okay. Now, again, folks, do not make this mistake. Do not add 8 to 102. You know why? There's not an X on this question. Remember, going back to what we know, and that is, if there is not an X, you cannot add up. There's not an X on this problem. All right? There's a check digit. So what you're going to have to do is just like the UPC. So let me clean all this up again. All right, so let me clean all this mess up, even the no here. I'm going to clean all this up. And I'm going to take the 6, cross it out, put an X. All right? So doing the exact same thing, I'm putting myself in a position where I can add up. All right? So step one, step one, uh, I don't know if I can, uh, I'm trying to put on, okay, I can't put on one screen. Actually, I think I can. Let me just zoom out. Maybe I can put on one screen. Oh, good. All right, so step one ends up being 70. Step two ends up being three. Okay. Step three. Ends up being, let's see. What did I check this again? Oh, I don't know why I did that, sorry. Step two in or step three ends up being twenty-three. Which means my new total would be ninety-six. So my check did or my total is ninety-six. Now notice I have an X, I have an X, I have an X, I have an X. So that means I can add up. I want to add up to 100, which would be 4. All right. Oh, my goodness, look at that. For this next credit card question, I have an X. That means I can add up. All right. So, 4, 0, 5, there, 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 there. All right, let's get going. All right, step one. Let's see if we can do this real quick. 4, still 0. Let's see, 9, 19, 20. 28, 28, 28 is 33, times it by 2, I get 66. Step 2, all, let's see, that's the 5 through 9 range, no, no, yep, yep, no, yep, no, yep, total of 4. Step 3, all the numbers I forgot, um, looks like big numbers, I'm going to have to use a calculator, 9 plus 11 plus 9 plus Actually, I didn't really need my calculator, but I did. All right, so that ends up being 29. So when I do step 4, 66 plus 4 plus 29 gives me 99, okay? Since I have an X, there's my X, I can just add up plus 1. So my check digit should have been 1. All right. This is the summary of John's grade name, MDM. All right, so... To find, remember, to find the mean score, you take all of his test scores, add all up, divide it by 3. All right, that's how you find the mean scores. And then you take the mean scores, you multiply by the percentage, which would be 0 0.40, 0 0.35, 0 0.05, and then 0.2. And that's how you get all your raw scores. Now, what is John's overall grade in the class? Very simply, you add all the raw scores up, he has an 84 at the end of his at the end of his AMDM class. All right, so this is summary of John's grade. Notice what we don't know is he does we do not have his final grade, so we don't know what he has to make. So, well, he wants it. Obviously, it looks like he wants to pass the class. All right, so the question is, what does he have to make on the final to achieve this? Well, if you remember the relationship, and that is the grade he wants. All right, the grade he wants, I put this in parentheses, minus the raw scores, you're going to get an answer. You're going to divide by the final exam percentage expressed as a decimal. All right? So very simply, the grade he wants is a 70. I'm going to subtract out the raw scores, 37.2, and then 
13.4. So 70 minus 37.2 minus 13.4. Enter 19.4. 19.4. And then I'm going to divide by the final exam percentage as a decimal. Remember here it was right here. So divide that by 0.3. Rounds to a 65. So the good news is he is already passing the class going into the final. So all he has to do is just make a 65, and then he'll still pass the class. All right. John is in the 12th grade. And he wrote an essay for the language arts class. There are five sentences with a total of 160 words. All right. Now, remember, on the very last question or the very last work uh, sheet of paper is the it's all the formulas. All right, so we're going to use the fog index. All right, so 0.4, the number of words, 160, over the number of sentences, which is 15, plus 100 times, I, I it, forgot the last part here, the number of complex words. So the number of complex words is 20 over the, the number of total words, which is 160. Plug it into the calculator. There you go. All right, the flesh Kincaid question. All right, so the flesh Kincaid. All right, so the flesh Kincaid starts with 0.39 and is the number of words, which is 160, over the number of sentences, which is 15, close parenthesis, plus 11.8, number of syllables, which is 300, over the number of words, which is 160, Minus the 1559 that everyone forgets. Plug in your calculator right there. So, fog index says this is basically ninth grade. All right. Flesh Kincaid is basically 10th grade. Remember that these answers may not always be the same, but they should be in the vicinity. All right. Now, again, I've said this several times, but let's say for the fog index, you got like 19.3. So, 19.3 to 10.7. That's too much of a variation. All right, so it's going to be similar, but not the same. All right, at a particular sporting event, remember the setup. Four tickets, four Cokes, two beers, four hot dogs, one parking permit. If you ever see, like, a program and there's, like, dash here, that just means zero. Two programs and then two ball caps. So I'm going to multiply these two, multiply these two, multiply these two, multiply this, multiply this, multiply this, multiply this, and just add it all up, and you're going to get X. All right, that's very straightforward. So let's go to this one right here, the fuzz. Four tickets, four Cokes, two beers, four hot dogs, parking permit is one. We don't know how many programs there are. We know that there's two ball caps, and it all equals 273.60. So we're going to do some calculations here. 4 times 38.9, 155.60, plus 4 times 5.75, which gives me 23. 2 times 7, that's easy. That's 14, plus 4 times 3.75. A lot of decimals in this problem here. 15 plus 15. Now notice 2 times x gives me 2x. 2 times 19 gives me 38. Gives me 273.60. So I'm going to simply combine like terms. Remember, anything that does not have an x on it gets added up. So it's going to be 2x plus... 155.6 plus 23 plus 14 plus 15 plus 15 plus 38 gives me 260.60 equals 273.60. I'm going to subtract the 260. 273.60 minus 260.60. I get 2x is equal to 13, which means x is equal to $6.50. Now, the last question is, if 3,250 families attend the sporting event, how much money would the team make? Now, let me kind of clean this up a little bit just so we don't go into information overload. You can always back up on the video to see the work. This is how much money a family of four spends. So one family spends $273.60. But if 3,250 families go, 
we will simply multiply 3,250 families times 22, uh, 273, 60. You do the math and you get 889,200. All right, that's it. Hope you, hope you learned something. Ask your teacher if you have any more questions. Thank you.